Okay there, comrades. Thank you for joining me. We're handing out them Darwin Awards once again. Or as you guys like to say, recruiting for the Kang Gang. And if you're unaware about what happened to him, he wasn't taking it seriously. Thought the pandemic was no big deal. Caught it after a Trump rally that he went to out in Oklahoma and, of course, died not long after. Shortly after that, his Twitter account kicked back on and some really grotesque ghouls over there have been using it to their advantage ever since. Quite shameful if you ask me. But what do I always say? What do I always say? You wouldn't do something so shameful if you weren't so shameless. Check this out. Louisiana Congressman-elect Luke Letlow, dead from COVID-19, of course a Republican. Luke Letlow, Louisiana's incoming Republican member of the U.S. House, died Tuesday night from complications related to COVID-19 only days before he would have been sworn into office. Ridiculous. That really bums. That bums me out, even though he was a Republican. It just bums. It just something about that. He was 41 years old. So that argument by right wingers, well, it's only people like 70 and up. That's out the window. That argument that it's disabled people, that's out the window. By the way, neither of those arguments are moral. Neither of them are acceptable. Disabled people aren't throwaways. They make the country better. The elderly are not throwaways. They make the country better. He didn't have any comorbidities either. Let low spokesman Andrew Bosch. I think that's how that's pronounced. I apologize if it is not. Confirm the congressman elects death at Oshner LSU Health in Shreveport, Louisiana. The family appreciates the numerous prayers and support over the past days, but asks for privacy during this difficult and unexpected time. A statement from the family along with funeral arrangements will be announced at a later time. Louisiana's eight-member congressional delegation called Letlow's death devastating. Luke had such a positive spirit and tremendously bright future ahead of him. Yeah, he just won. The guy just won and probably was going to get reelected at this rate. Mm. That is just some, that's something else. He was looking forward to serving the people of Louisiana in Congress, and we were excited to welcome him to our delegation where he was ready to make an even greater impact on our state and our nation. Now, of course, I think it goes without saying that we probably would have opposed his political agenda about 100%. That's not really the point of this video. State's newest congressman set to take office in January was admitted to a Monroe hospital on December 19th after testing positive for the coronavirus. He was later transferred to the Shreveport facility and placed in the ICU. Dr. Ghali of LSU told the LSU Shreveport, told the health, told the advocate that Letlow didn't have any underlying health conditions and that, that would have placed him at greater risk to COVID-19, which is something else, man. Look, this is an incredibly contagious virus. It's not the flu. Okay, It's not like anything we've dealt with before. Early on in this, we, had to, we were trying to point out to people before they became too obstinate that this is going to kill more people than the last SARS, MERS, Ebola, Zika, swine flu, bird flu, and this seasonal flu combined. It was going to beat all of those. And of course, we were right. It's surpassed that 10 times over. The combination of all those, it has surpassed 10 times over. And this is where we are. These people don't want to listen. We have an undercurrent of anti-intellectualism in this country. An undercurrent of prideful ignorance. There's no honor in that, by the way. There is no honor in prideful ignorance. There's honor in common sense and decency. There's honor in skeptical thinking in a scientific thought process. <sighs> Letlow from the small town of Start in Richland Parish was elected in December run a runoff election for the sprawling 5th District. In the U.S. House seat representing central and northeastern regions of the state, including the cities of Monroe and Alexandria. He was to fill the seat being vacated by his boss, Republican Ralph Abraham Letlow, had been Abraham's chief of staff and ran with Abraham's backing for the job. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this in there for you. 
he um he's leaving behind some family here. He's leaving behind a wife and two kids. So let's keep that in mind. This isn't just some eligible bachelor. Not that that would be okay. Not that that would be okay. But this has just punched a hole in their world. That can never be filled. And um, he was one of these guys that was um, much more concerned with the economy than fighting the pandemic, which I don't know how you do one without the other. I'm going to read to you what he said not that long ago. Back October 8th. Our economy is vital to the future of our state and our country, which is why you guys should have did a populist and socialist program to save the economy. Rent freeze, mortgage freeze, loan freeze, furlough workers, UBI, Medicaid expansion. You get the deal. So while we've been cautious, and I think both the state and federal level have taken numerous precautions for COVID-19, we're now at a place if we do not open our economy, we're in real danger. That's what he was saying on October 8th. Imagine being that reactionary. You know how many people were dying a day? I'm going to read to you a couple of comments, but we're not going to go too much into it because it's it, it, there's some nasty stuff. <clears throat> First comment says, imagine owning the libs so hard that it kills you. That's what's going on here. Make no doubt about it. A lot of this is just about owning the libs, who are also capitalists, by the way. So what, what are you guys even doing? It's this capitalist infighting, this homicidal policy of economic abandonment, these murderous policies of school reopenings, university reopening. What is wrong with their freaking minds? They're totally attached to the profit motive. 41 years old, leaves behind two young children. What a colossal tragedy of stupidity this has all been. Luke Letlow's views not only led to his own death, but certainly that of countless constituents. It shouldn't take the death of a colleague to get the GOB, GOP to act more responsibly, but maybe it will change a few minds. My condolences to his family. I'm going to leave it at that. My commiseration is with his family. That's who I'm commiserating with. I commiserate with the 337,000 families, friends, communities, co-workers who have died, who have lost people. I commiserate with them all. But it's not enough. We have to enact a socialist program, a populist program to get us out of here. We need a rent freeze, a mortgage freeze, a loan freeze. We need monthly stimulus checks. Make them retroactive. We need Medicaid expanded by the president because it's a national emergency. All he needs is to use the pen. We need to furlough all the workers and pay them. We need to freeze property taxes if that's necessary. If you're a small business, you should be guaranteed to stay in business. We should guarantee you stay in business. This is a mess. This is a disaster. People feel like it's a one or the other thing. You can't decouple the pandemic from the fight to save the economy. You can't do it. Guys, I'm going to leave it at that. You know what's up.